Hello everyone. So, we will continue with uh, the textile reinforced composites. In last class, we have discussed the critical length and now we will discuss how to calculate the modulus and ultimate failure stress of continuous fiber composite like unidirectional modulus and ultimate failure strains of composite knowing the stress strain characteristics of both matrix material and the reinforcing material. Here the assumption is that the fibers are in continuous form and as it is continuous, so strain along the longitudinal direction for both the matrix and the fibers will be same as that of the composite. So, epsilon m is the strain of matrix, epsilon f is strain in fiber and epsilon c is strain in composite. <coughs> so, stress can be measured by multiplying the modulus with the strain. So, total force is normally it is addition of the force on fiber and force on matrix. Now, if we know the volume fraction of fiber, we can calculate the required or calculated the stress and calculated modulus of composite. So, for unit cross sectional area of composite, so stress on composite is equal to stress on fiber plus stress on matrix. If the volume fraction of the fiber is V f and volume fraction of matrix is V m. So, the equation is the stress in composite equal to stress in fiber multiplied by volume fraction of fiber plus stress in matrix multiplied by volume fraction of matrix. Similarly, we can get the modulus of composite by multiplying the individual fiber modulus with the volume fraction of fiber and modulus of the matrix with the volume fraction of matrix which is 1 minus volume fraction of fiber. Here in this equation the so Poisson's ratio is not considered. Now, we will take the example of two situations one is the composite with the ductile matrix another is with the brittle matrix. So, composite as we know the two major components one is matrix another is the reinforcing material that is in case of textile based composite it is a fiber. Now, here if we see for example, here the two stress strain curves are given for fiber and matrix. Now, from this figure we can see the breaking stress of fiber is 2 5 0 0 mega Pascal and breaking stress of matrix ultimate stress of matrix is 1300 mega Pascal as the matrix elongation. So, breaking elongation is higher than the reinforcing materials elongation. So, they will not break at the same time. So, while extending although fiber the reinforcing material is taking maximum load, but due to its lower extensibility. So, lower breaking elongation fiber will break fast at that time the load 
on matrix, matrix will carry load it is less than the, the breaking stress of the matrix. So, that stress on matrix will be 1200. So, this is just typical example how the calculation will be done 2500 is the ultimate stress of reinforcing material, 1300 is ultimate stress of matrix and 1200 is that the stress carried by the matrix when the fibers are breaking. So, this is required to calculate the critical volume fraction. So, ultimate strength of composite is sigma u c ultimate stress which is the addition of the stress by the fiber and stress by the matrix. So, we have we will consider two different situations a ductile material where the ultimate strain of fiber is less than the ultimate strain of matrix. This is the diagram here matrix is uh, the extension is high this is ductile composites figure and we can have another composite which is brittle matrix. Typically the brittle matrix are the thermoset matrix where the matrix material matrix elongation the strain breaking strain of matrix is less than the breaking stress of so breaking strain of the fiber reinforcing material. Now, for ductile material if we see here, here as per this picture this is the stress strain strain stress strain curve of fiber which is reinforcing material and here is the matrix. The ultimate strain of matrix is more than ultimate strain of fiber. That is why it is called ductile matrix. This is the stress of ultimate stress of fiber. And this is the ultimate stress of matrix, and here sigma dash m sigma dash m is the stress on matrix when the fibers are breaking because matrix is having higher breaking stress. So, in this condition we will consider two different situations. In situation 1 before the fibers are breaking the load will be carried by both 
the fiber and the matrix, but after the fibers are breaking during this stage when fibers have broken the load will be transferred to only on the matrix. So, let us see the situation the before the breakage of fibers because fiber will break fast in that case ultimate stress of composite is given by the ultimate stress of fiber because fibers are breaking ultimate stress of fiber multiplied by volume fraction of fiber plus this is the stress carried by the fiber and at that point the stress shared by the matrix is sigma s sigma dash m that time multiplied by volume fraction of matrix. In this situation is before the breakage of the fiber. So, both fiber and matrix they are carrying the load, but after the fibers are broken. So, all the fibers are broken. So, after breakage of fiber the load is shared by only the matrix. So, then ultimate stress of composite will be the multiplication of ultimate stress of matrix and the volume fraction. The plot here is that with volume fraction of fiber at starting point in x axis at the starting point the volume fraction of fiber is 0 and its maximum volume fraction of fiber is 1. So, when volume fraction of fiber is 0 that means, V f is 0 that ultimate stress by this composite is it will be equal to sigma dash m which is this starting point the solid line is showing. So, at 0 we will get a point this is the point equal to it is a sigma dash m is the starting point. this is matrix and here In this situation, if we draw the ultimate stress of composite versus the volume fraction, this is volume fraction of fiber at this point the volume fraction is 0, here volume fraction is 1. So, here volume fraction is 0. So, at volume fraction 0, as per this equation, let me draw the equation composite. because when the fibers are breaking the matrix is carrying sigma dash m. Here if we put the V f equal to 0, so this will become 0 at 0 volume fraction and this will become 0. So, it will be effectively sigma dash m. So, before fiber 
sir breaking when this equation is followed. So, this is m at 100 percent fiber volume fraction say volume fraction is 1. So, if you put the V f equal to 1 here V f equal to 1 then what will happen this segment this section will be 0 because 1 minus 1 equal to 0 this will become is 1. So, at this is the point. So, if we join we will get a plot which shows the ultimate stress of composite when the fibers are not broken. So, when the both the composite that reinforcing material and fibers they are carrying load, but in case when the the reinforcing materials they have been broken in that case the ultimate st stress of composite will be equal to ultimate stress of matrix multiplied by volume fraction of matrix that is 1 minus V f. Here if we see at volume fraction of 0, so V f if we put V f 0 then this will become sigma m. So, this is u m. So, this will become sigma u m. Okay. So, this is equal to this point and for 100 percent volume fraction when there is no theoretically there is no matrix 100 percent fibers are there. So, this value becomes 0. So, this total ultimate strain stress will become 0. So, we can if we join So, we can join with the different color. So, this curve this curve is showing the ultimate stress before the breakage of fiber when both matrix and fibers are taking load, but this curve is showing the condition where matrix only is taking the load. So, if we see that at this joining point this intersecting point the, the volume fraction it is known as critical volume fraction of fiber. This is the critical volume fraction of fiber. So, V critical. So, this is the joining point. So, before the if the fibers which we use if it is less than the critical volume fraction fiber volume fraction less than the critical volume fraction then this equation will follow and if it is more than critical volume fraction then this equation will be dominating. So, we must use the fiber volume fraction more than the critical volume fraction then only we will get the assistance of the reinforcing material. So, this from here we can calculate the critical volume fraction. So, if it is less than critical volume fraction if we use the fibers smaller quantity fiber then we will see ultimate stress of composite will be dominated by the matrix only not the fiber because you can see here. So, at lower level less the in this zone in this zone the matrix the composite stress will be higher because the stress of composite at any point along the axis at any level of volume fraction will be 
the point where among these two equations two, uh, two curves whichever is higher. So, if the volume fraction is less than the fiber volume fraction sorry uh, critical volume fraction then this equation is dominating. Similarly, for brittle matrix the treatment will be in a similar way the matrix is brittle. So, the both the stress breaking stress and breaking strain are less than the fiber fiber breaking uh, stress here ultimate stress again it is at this point matrix breaking strains is at this point here and during the breakage of matrix the load carried by a fiber is sigma dash f and similarly we can get this graph, where it shows that for brittle matrix if the volume fraction is more than that is critical volume fraction then majority of the stress will carried by the fiber which is strong enough so which is reinforcing material. So, ultimate stress will follow this equation that is the stress of fiber. So, it is ultimate stress of fiber multiplied by volume fraction that will be the ultimate stress of composite. So, from this two figures we can calculate the volume fraction of both brittle matrix composite and for ductile matrix composite. Here we can see the volume fraction selection is extremely important we should know the volume fraction and accordingly we have to decide the fiber volume fraction the critical volume fraction is important. So, based on critical volume fraction we should decide the proportion of uh, fiber the fiber volume fraction it should be more than the critical volume fraction. Now, we will discuss here the composite manufacturing processes there are different processes available most of the commercial process we will see at existing process they are based on the thermoset matrix and obvious reason is that thermoset matrix is the viscosity is less so that is why most of the existing manufacturing process it is based on thermoset matrix and thermoplastic matrix for composite making from thermoplastic matrix it is very difficult for that we need specialized system and those processes where we can use the thermoplastic polymer as the matrix material in a composite we will discuss in next class. Here we will discuss all the manufacturing processes based on the thermo set matrix. First process is the hand layup process as the name implies that hand layup means it is manually we have to mix the matrix with the reinforcing material. Here we can see here the person is laying up the, the thermoset matrix which is with a low viscosity there is a frame over which that this is the glass fabric and the, the fabric is laid on the this frame and the matrix is 
okay, laid on the poured on the this glass fabric and the matrix penetrates into the glass structure and forms the composite. Here the resins they are laying up and after doing that manually they will press it by some rollers. So, that proper penetration of matrix takes place as we can see from here the tooling cost is low because there is no specialized machinery required. Versatile products can be hand laid this is hand laying. So, any sorts of products can be made because we can we have to only lay the um, uh, reinforcing fabric and pour the, the matrix thermoplastic matrix. The main disadvantage of this process is that it is a long curing cycle. We have to allow time to get the matrix solidified. So, it is time consuming high labor demanding because you need large number of manual labor because here we have to we are pouring the, the matrix and by hand we are trying to penetrate that matrix material. There are chances of the air bubbles in the final product no control over orientation of fibers if we try to use the loose fibers then we do not have any control, but in this picture we are we can see it is a glass non woven fabrics are used. So, it is difficult in ensuring consistency in application of resin because it is manually done. So, the resin concentration at different places may be different large void content be due to the air bubbles which affect the quality of the matrix and most important is that it is not covered. So, liberation of volatile organic compound which may be harmful for human health the chances of this human health hazard is there, but the advantage is that it is a simple process. Next method is that spray method here instead of hand spray hand laying we spray with the help of spray gun both the chopped fiber and resin. So, we can see here from the suppose this is the shape we want okay, and we are trying this is one spray gun and the chopped fibers are these are the chopped fibers are coming and we can use spray of the resin. So, these are laying here and that can be laid and we can form the composite. So, this type of composite formation is there. So, the composite manufacturing process is known as spraying method where chopped fiber and resin is sprayed on a mold. This combination is then cured this process is slowly substituting substituting the substituted by the resin transfer molding. So, because of the obvious reason here the chances of the air bubbles are there void content is high. So, in RTM resin transfer molding the 
chances of void content is less, but still due to its simplicity, due to its flexibility, we still use this spray method. So, the main advantage of this method is that any material can be used as mold. So, we can have very complex molds shape, it is a continuous process not like hand laying method. This is a continuous uh, process because the spray gun it can run continuously and in case of any correction required. So, in case of any void content or any uneven thickness respraying can be done to correct any error. The disadvantages are that it is a process is unfriendly to environment as we have seen in the hand laying method, because the volatile material can be can get evaporated and mix with the environmental air inconsistency in fiber and matrix distribution, because they are indirectly laid. The the mixing is done indirectly through spraying method. So, there is a chance of incons inconsistency. Fiber orientation it is not being controlled, we cannot control whatever fibers laying are there. So, if we want unidirectional orientation it is not possible, because fibers are deposited with the help of spraying gun. So, that is why we cannot control it is a slow process. Here we can see that if we want the smooth finish in both the sides it is not possible, only the side where the mold is there the smooth finish is there, but other side it is randomly deposited. So, there will be some randomness in the surface. Next method is open mold spray up chopping method, where the rovings or fibers are chopped first and then mix with the matrix material, because it is a similar to the hand layup, but it is a quicker method and we can develop a complex shape of composite. Thickness and consistency is controlled manually here, the process is more operated operator dependent than hand layup, because here the operator has to control both chopping and the spraying. So, these are used for production of boats, tanks, transportation components. So, the main advantages are the process is simple, the process is high potential to automation, very large parts can be produced tooling cost is lower, on site fabrication that is more important. See in on site fabrication, so if we want to uh, fabricate some composite on site that we can do by using open mold spray up chopping method. So, here we can see here and suppose roving this is roving package this say glass roving or anything here there will be chopping this chopped and then this is a resin and this resin here is pumped with the help of pump and there will be a gun spray gun and then there is a mold suppose this is mold and suppose this is 
resin material and they will be mixed here and it will be formed the composite will form here. So, the chopper gun feeds glass rubbing and raising the resin saturated this chopped glass is then deposited on the mold. The laminate is then rolled to thoroughly saturated glass strand and compact the chop. So, that then there will be one roller which will compact the matrix and the glass fiber to achieve the desired thickness additional layer of chopped laminate can be added. So, we can keep on adding to have required the thickness. Next is the sheet molding, sheet, sheet mold composite uses the chopped glass strand as reinforcement and polyester as resin in the form of a sheet. So, where we will get a sheet, so in between the two sheets that is uh, the protecting sheets, the chopped glass fiber and polyester resins are placed. In this process chopped glass strand are packed between two layers of film. So, two films will be there, these films are used just to separate the layers. This sandwich of chopped glass strand and film on which the resin is applied is made to pass through a compacting system that ensure the complete penetration of resin into the reinforcement. Now, let us see there will be typically two films. Now, this is one this is one film is coming ok. Now, here we are applying some resin one side this is or resin is applied in this side and some knife will be there doctor's knife which will control the resin thickness. And another it is coming here with the resin ok and this side it is a resin side. Another film suppose this I am drawing with the dark blue color this is another film is coming where again the resin is being applied on other side and in between two layers sorry in between two layers so this side is sorry the this is resin here this side is resin impregnated now in between these two there is a glass these are the glass rubbings and these glass rubbings are chopped here and they are mixed here. So, in ultimately what is happening there will be one layer at the top this layer and this layer at the bottom this is impregnated with res resin this side this side is impregnated with resin and in between there will be glass. 
this is one prepeg and then they are passed through the roller or under pressure they will get compacted the resin will penetrate inside the glass they will get mixed and till this time the resin is in viscous form before it gets solidifies we can form a roll and keep it under cold condition when we require to form the composite we can take it out and solidify depending on our requirement so these are put on storage for few days before final molding to will let the prepeg thickness it will get gradually it will thicken because with the time it the viscosity of the resin will increase and then gradually it will solidify the films function is that to separate two layers when we ro form roll they will not get stick to that to each other so the advantages are high throughput inexpensive and the process is reliable because we can get uh, sufficient uniformity main disadvantage is that high volume fraction are not possible because of the fact that the proper penetration is required and that is why if we use high volume fraction high volume fraction of fiber then proper impregnation will not possible be possible the another advantage is we cannot as the process says we cannot form any complex shape here plain sheet or plain board can be made in this process because it is a, a sheet form third process is that that next process is the bulk molding here the fiber volume fraction of 50 percent can be achieved we can have finished application excellent mechanical properties can be achieved the system is very simple here and this in this system we have to use the chopped fiber of uh, the smaller length the chopped fibers and the matrix that prepeg this is these are the fibers and the matrix material they are mixed together and they are fed through the hopper this is a prepreg and there is a screw arrangement this is a screw arrangement with the rotation of screw this prepreg will be pushed in one direction and there is a mold this is a mold of a known shape this is a mold where if we want a particular shape suppose we need a particular shape this type of material if we need 
we can so this is the shape we final shape we require so here due to the screw arrangement this prepreg will be pumped inside the mold and ultimately this will form the composite required composite and the here the chopped fibers and the resin are mixed so only short staple fibers can be used as has already been already been mentioned so continuous filament or long fibers we cannot use because long fiber if we try to use so fibers even staple fiber with longer fiber length then proper mixing is not possible so fiber arrangement cannot be controlled complex parts cannot be manufactured and this process requires high temperature as well as high pressure because here we have to apply high pressure in this method bulk molding method we can use the thermoplastic matrix also in the form of say powder so for that high temperature is required in the mold next system is that resin transfer molding here there will be a mold cavity and into the cavity of the mold the resin is infused at high pressure now this is the mold this is one side of mold suppose we want to uh, hemispherical or curved shape matrix sorry ma curved shaped composite this is the shape here inside we have the reinforcing material it may be textile fabric also non oven and there will be one sorry, opening for resin injection resin is injected here at high pressure and at from the side there will be sealing and everything will be there and resin is injected at high pressure and in this system only thermo set resin can be used due to its low viscosity they will penetrate into the inside the structure of the textile material and after curing this molds this is the one side of mold this is the male mold if you see it is a female mold. So, after that we can remove the mold to get the, the composite. So, prior to closing and clamping of the mold the reinforcement is stationed in the mold cavity. So, that mold cavity reinforcement is already placed there. So, resin is injected under pressure so we need high pressure for higher viscosity resin so pressure can be controlled here and after that the part is cured the reinforcement used can range from preform to a pattern cut roll stock material so it's a versatile process the cost is cost of composite manufacturing is low here. 
So, low tooling cost, low void content because the composite that uh, the matrix can be injected at high pressure. So, void content is low, low pressure injection. So, for low very low viscous material. So, injection pressure is required low pressure. So, high volume fraction can be achieved. So, as high as 65 percent volume fraction can be achieved. So, limited volatile emission that is important in hand layup or open mold system. So, this uh, the volatile emissions were there. So, RTM is environment friendly here good surface finish can be achieved on both the sides because both the sides are covered there are other advantages. So, complex structure can be uh, produced even hollow shape can be produced if we can manufacture the mold the main disadvantage is that the intricate parts are difficult to produce. So, simple shape hollow and other shapes simple shapes can be produced if we try to produce a intricate part. So, this method is not suitable. So, material wastage sometime takes place due to the leakage and higher curing time is required these are the disadvantages some and compression modeling is basically it is a simple technique, but in compression modeling normally we use the thermoplastic uh, matrix. The main advantages are its consistency, Here the system is that there is a mold. So, we can have a mold of any shape, okay. this is a mold and at the top there will be another mold. So, after that we can lay the reinforcing material along with the this is the say one layer of matrix this is reinforcing material then we can put another layer of matrix another layer of reinforcing material. So, we can do many combinations and at the top there will be the other part of the mold. Now, this is the base mold and under high pressure this is pressed and then the heater is on this is basically these are the heaters there will be heat. So, at high temperature this thermoplastic matrix they melt and mix up with the, the penetrate inside the reinforcement structure. So, it is a very expensive because mold cost is very high. So, heating up and cooling down of the machine is time consuming. So, as I have mentioned, molds are expensive, but the system is very simple. Next process is the prepreg manufacturing method. In the prepreg the reinforcing fibers are impregnated inside the resin that mainly thermoset resin and then they are rolled, but before rolling 
from both the sides two layers of the separating films are there. Suppose this is a reinforcing fiber or we can take the fabric as well. This is now this reinforcing material it is passed through resin. So, they have they are getting impregnated with the resin. So, this is the prepreg and this prepreg we have to maintain we have to this is resin impregnated fabric and this prepreg we have to form a roll, but we cannot form roll because they will get the next layer will stick to the previous layer. For that the system here is that the separating film roll this is a separating film from both the side there will be two separating film. So, this film is there and here in between there will be prepreg this is prepreg and then we can form roll of this we are forming roll and this films are separating film. So, here control over orientation of fibers are there which is very important we can use the filament. So, continuous filament sheet we can use, we can use the oven fabric, we can use non oven fabric as the reinforcing material here. Uniform distribution of fiber and resin is there because the reinforcing material is dipped into the uh, resin. So, resin that the, it will be in uniform low void content completely immersed because the reinforcing material is completely immersed inside the resin. It is consistent low curing time high throughput because this is continuous process. The main disadvantages are as the process is continuous the production will be high. So, a large order is required otherwise this is not suitable for the batch wise production it is a continuous production and at the same time if we produce large quantity with the thermoset resin if we keep for long time then this will get solidified. So, we have to use the this uh, prepreg before it gets solidifies and otherwise we can keep it under refrigerated condition where temperature is around minus 80 degree Celsius. So, that adds to the cost. So, if we keep at room temperature this prepreg will get solidified and that will not be useful. Next is the filament winding technique, it is a simple technique where the filaments are wound on the one cylindrical shape package and before winding this filaments are passed through the resin. This is the cylinder and which we can which is rotates rotating cylinder. Now, the packages are there the reinforcing materials packages are there and these are 
So, number of packages we can take these filaments are coming and then they are processed through the emerged through the reinforcing material then like you know what is a resin and this resin immersed this is resin immersed filaments are then wound on the cylinder. the resin immerse. So, the filament along with the resin they are winding on the on this packet this cylinder and here after winding they get automatically solidifies because the resin is thermoset resin and after solidification we can take out from the package this base cylinder. So, this and this will ultimately form a cylindrical shape composite. This composite will be hollow cylindrical shape. So, if once we take out after solidification and there will be one traversing mechanism depending on our the shape required or depending on the, the thickness required we can change the traversing speed. So, here the in textile manufacturing process can be used, normal winding process can be used here, only hollow parts can be produced here. We cannot produce any other part. So, main disadvantage is only cylindrical shape can be produced here. So, high speeds is not possible because the matrix has to be that that uh, reinforcing material has to be impregnated with the matrix properly. Curing by heat is not easy to apply because from inside it there will be a that basic base cylinder on which the, the filaments are winding. So, heat application is not that easy. So, curing time will be very high. Next method of manufacturing which is simple one is it is known as pultrusion. Here in this case only continuous filaments can be produced. So, continuous filament as reinforcing composites are produced like earlier one that is the filament winding technique. The pultrusion the term came from the pull and extrusion. So, here the material is pulled through the die that the resin impregnated filaments are pulled through dry to form the composite. The shape of the or cross section of the composite is controlled by the, the shape of die. First the there will be large number of filament packages. So, there are these are the filaments. depending on the requirement. So, these filaments are then taken together. So, to, to form a thick toe, then they are immersed into the resin, the resins are there here and then this thick filament immersed with resin 
there will be one die, this is the die shape, they will be pulled through this. So, this is the die shape what, and this filaments will then be pulled through this die to form a required shape of composite. So, this is the reinforcing material shown in red. So, we will get the composite, but here we need one pulling arrangement. So, maybe roller pulling or maybe other type of pulling. we have to pull the reinforcing material through the die. So, continuous fiber reinforced composite is produced here. So, the manufacturing process is similar to extrusion in which molten plastic or metal is pushed through the die, but here the, the reinforcing fiber filament along with the resin will be pulled through the die. So, the main advantages are the continuous reinforcement, the lever requirement is low because the moving parts are less, the process is mostly automated. Variety of cross sections can be produced depending on the shape of the die, high throughput, the product productivity is high. The main disadvantage is that here mainly thermoset matrix can be used as I have already mentioned die cost is very high and another point is that dry can be easily clogged because the composite the matrix thermoset matrix deposition may be there in the die. So, it can be clogged easily. So, we must take care of cleaning it frequently and the last method is the vacuum bagging method. In this system, we do not use any external pressure for compaction. On the other way, we create vacuum, so that the atmospheric pressure with the help of atmospheric pressure, the, the impregnation and the compaction takes place. So, here the impervious bags are placed, so that the films are laid on the composite material and the air is evacuated. So, suppose this is laminate laminate of reinforcing material and we have placed the resins also it's immersed in the resin. Now, in this laminate what we do? We are placing different layers the layers are the bleeder layer, this is the bleeder layer which will absorb excess resin, then releasing films are there, there will be releasing film. So, different layers are put on uh, uh, they have their different functions. Now, at the uppermost side there will be a bag a sheet material ok. And this is placed in such a way there will be a gap through which we can take out the air. So, this is air is taken out. So, as air is taken out this will get compacted due to the atmospheric pressure 
and the composite will get compacted compressed and finally, the whatever voids are there the air bubbles will come out and composite formation will complete. So, air is evacuated from the bag and the composite is consolidated under pressure of one atmosphere because it is a uh, atmospheric pressure is required. The application of pressure ensures the impregnation of reinforcement with the matrix. So, and there will be uniform pressure because the total air is evacuated. So, uniform pressure will be applied throughout the composite. So, main advantages are the superior quality products can be obtained, versatility in use of fiber matrix combination, but here we can use only the reinforce that is the thermoset matrix, but different types of fibers can be used. It is very simple one can easily design this this type of manufacturing method easily it is a low cost. Main disadvantage here this the pressure we have to depend on the atmospheric pressure more than that we cannot insert. So, very low speed because we have to form the total system for a particular shape of composite it is not continuous requires frequent replacement of bleeder cloth because this will get saturated with the resin. Heating capacity is restricted due to different layers the heating is not easy. So, matrix reach and matrix tab areas are possible if proper care is not taken because we are not adding any extra matrix material we are only here it is a compression system at low pressure compression system that is why chances of matrix reach and matrix starved areas are there. So, we must ensure proper impregnation of reinforcing material with the matrix material. So, these are all about the manufacturing methods of composites in next class we will discuss the textile structures in advanced composites mainly prefreg formation and preform formation where we will see how the thermoplastic matrix are used in composite manufacturing. Till then thank you.